Hello, um, here I am again. <laughs> um, so as promised, I'm going to read you uh, a chapter a day of my book, uh, My Great Granny Moo. And um, I wrote this uh, a few years ago um, and some children who I taught about four years ago, I read it to them as I was writing it and it was quite an exciting process because they would give me feedback and say, oh, I really like that bit. And one little boy went to me, what's going to happen next? And I said, I don't know, I haven't written it yet. So it was quite exciting. So, and for those children, I think they left before I finished it. So if they never did read it, here's your chance now, but they're all probably uh, a bit too grown up now. Um, so I'm going to read um, a chapter a day of my great granny Moo. And um, my inspiration for this came from um, a few things, really. Uh, my husband's nan, who was called uh, Muriel and therefore was named Granny Moo, and she was a formidable woman, a real character, and uh, she gave me inspiration for the granny in this book. And also, as a child, um, I loved Enid Blyton and the Famous Five stories. And there were always this group of kids rampaging around the countryside, solving loads of uh, crimes and mysteries. And I just desperately wanted to be one of those kids writing um, messages in invisible ink and stuff like that. So that kind of gave me a bit of a, a bit of inspiration for, for an adventure story. And I named it after my husband's gran, so Granny Moo. So um, if she's up there looking down on us now, I hope she likes it. So here we have uh, chapter one, um, my great Granny Moo. Now, don't forget 4B, you have to learn your seven times table for your test tomorrow morning, blah, 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 blah. And after the test, we'll be presenting our assembly on the golden rules, blah, blah, blah. I look at the clock, 3.12pm, only three minutes to go, then it's home time and it's Friday. Two whole days of freedom and tonight is my favourite night of all. Tonight is Granny Moo night. Every Friday, I have to spend the night with my great Granny Moo while my parents have grown-up time, whatever that is, for as long as I can remember. Granny Moo used to live in a house a few streets away from ours, but now she lives in a granny annex that my dad built on the side of our house when my mum said she was getting worried about Moo living alone, although if you knew my gran, you would hardly describe her as a frail old lady. Even though she now lives practically at our house, we have still kept the tradition of me visiting her. This is for two reasons. Firstly, because it still feels like a special night away. And secondly, because my grand's flat is jam-packed full of the most amazing treasures from far-flung places and times gone by. Every Friday, there's a visual treat from huge conch shells with soft pink insides that sound like the ocean when you hold them to your ear, to scarves of azure and turquoise silk fringed with tiny jingling silver coins. Every Friday, I will discover a new treasure. My gran will say, now, there's quite a story behind that, my dear. And once we've eaten our tea, we will settle down on the plump sofa cushions patterned with pink roses and I will nestle into my gran as she tells me her latest tale while I sip creamy hot chocolate. I mean, just the way I like it. <coughs> as I listen, I will never remember when I fall asleep, but I will wake snuggled under a blanket, dreaming of kings and queens, of tropical rainforests and of deserted islands far away. Ding, ling, 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 the bell rings. Class dismissed. Have a great weekend. See you Monday. I scrape back my chair, grab my coat and my lunchbox from the shelf and race out the door, running and skipping all the way home. I burst in through the front door, dumping my coat in the hallway and head straight into the kitchen where my mum is sitting at the kitchen table, chatting and sharing a coffee with my auntie Sandra. Hey Molly, had a good day at school, she asks. Not too bad, I reply. Glad it's Friday, Granny Moo night tonight. Honestly, I swear you two are joined at the hip, laughs Mum. No doubt she'll be filling your head with all her tall tales again. I go over to kiss my mum. Shall I go now? I ask eagerly. Oh, go on then, says Mum, kissing the top of my head. Now be good and don't stay up all night, you two. Love you, Mum. See you in the morning. I walk out through the back of the kitchen and round the side of our house to Granny Moo's front door. She opens the door before I knock and smiles a lovely twinkly smile. Hey Molly Moo, she says and hugs me tightly. She smells of lavender and the special soap she buys from the department store in town. Hey Granny Moo, not too early am I? I ask as I hug her back. Never too early for me dear, she replies in her usual cheery tone. Granny Moo, Moo is short for Molly and the reason I got my name um, is short and plump. She has soft champagne coloured curls that she wears twisted into a neat little bun and gold rimmed glasses perched on the end of her button nose. She has kind twinkly eyes and always wears something bright and cheerful, matches her personality. 
Today, she's wearing a coloured scarf of pink and lilac stripes, edged with silver tassels and satin pumps embroidered with pink and lilac roses. Come on, she says, dinner won't be long. What's for tea tonight, Granny Moo? We've got a special stew, all the way from Morocco, called a tagine. It's all the rage in Marrakesh, you know. Every week, my gran conjures up delicious delicacies from faraway places and the gorgeous smell wafting from the bubbling pot on the cooker in her tiny kitchen today is no exception. Should we eat on our laps? She asks mischievously, knowing what my mum's answer to this would be. A little secret, I beam. She passes me a tray laden with bright coloured dishes filled with yoghurt and couscous and round flatbread sprinkled with herbs. I walk through to the lounge and place the tray on the coffee table. I settle down onto the comfy sofa and kick off my shoes. From the corner of my eye, I notice a large red stone shimmering in the evening sunlight. I reach across to the bookcase where the stone nestles amongst leather-bound books, photographs in gold frames, polished stones, bright coloured feathers and silver trinket boxes. I am drawn to its smooth, glassy surface and its ruby red brightness. I run my fingers over its sharp cut edges, holding it up to the light, mesmerised by its shine. At that moment, my gran enters the room, carrying two stone bowls filled with a steaming hot tagine. Chunks of tender, juicy lamb in a rich, fruity sauce, a warm red colour to match the jewel in my hand. This is new, Granny. I've not seen this before, I say, as I show her the stone. Ah, now there really is quite a tale behind that, Molly dear. Maybe I'll tell you after dinner. And next time we'll read Chapter 2, which is Granny Moo and Prince Karim of Casablanca. See you next time. Bye.